today, you're connected more than ever. Your friends, your family, your life. Having a partner that understands banking is what you do on your time, anywhere you like. It's about being connected. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Daily Journal News Break, sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning, Northeast Mississippi, and welcome into News Break for this Wednesday, August the 24th. I'm your host, Brad Locke, and thanks for tuning in to this uh, daily program. And News Break comes to you five days a week, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. You can find it uh, at djournal.com or on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. So let's get going with the weather forecast brought to you by Weather Underground. Today's forecast is going to see partly cloudy skies, a high of 95 degrees, low of 74, 20% chance of rain. Looking at the three-day outlook, Partly cloudy on Thursday, going to see a high of 93, a low of 74, and a 20% chance of rain. Friday, we do have a chance of thunderstorms, about 40%, a high of 93, and a low of 74. And getting uh, into the weekend on Saturday, partly cloudy skies, a high of 94, a low of 72, 20% chance of rain. Let's now take a look at the top headlines from today's Daily Journal and djournal.com. A Lee County-based organization is sending dozens of volunteers to the flood-ravaged areas of Louisiana to aid in the immediate recovery process. Hope Reigns, which is the emergency response division of Tupelo-based Christian charity Eight Days of Hope, is pulling in volunteers from 20 states that began arriving last week in Baton Rouge, where one subdivision of the state capital received more than three feet of rain in a 48-hour period. Hope Reigns director Chris Child said that more than 60,000 homes were affected by the flooding in areas where the water have receded, around 70 volunteers head out in crews of 10 each day helping homeowners restore and repair their homes. The work includes pulling out furniture, pu pulling up flooring, taking out drywall and insulation and dealing with mold. Child said more volunteers are needed and anyone wanting to help or donate to the relief effort can visit 8daysofhope.com and follow the Hope Rains link. Mississippi lawmakers looking to streamline the state spending have questions for agency directors. Those questions center around how much tax money is directed directly providing services to people and how much is being spent on administration. Budget hearings are being held this week in Jackson. Republican Lieutenant Governor Tate Reeves is among those challenging directors who have spoken out about the effects of budget cuts that started with the new fiscal year, which began July the 1st. Reeves criti criticized Mississippi State Department of Health leaders for giving pay raises to about 3,400 employees over the past four years, even as the department has cut services for the current year. Department Director Diana Makula said some of the raises went to direct care workers who moved into higher level jobs. Reeves said 35 employees have received raises of at least $20,000. Reeves said the Mississippi State Department of Health has received millions more dollars over the past five years, but Dr. Mary Currier, the state health officer, said the department has had to reduce some services, lay off employees, and increase fees due to the budget cuts. She said the department is also reducing travel expenses and is going to work within the budget that legislatures approve, remaining mindful of its main mission of protecting public health. The fall is almost here, and that means football fans across Mississippi will soon be attending games at Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Just don't plan on bringing a backpack with you into the stadium. Both universities are prohibiting fans from taking large bags into their venues as an added security measure. Mississippi State is implementing a clear bag policy that calls for bags to be clear, plastic, or vinyl. It, it will also allow PVC bags smaller than 12 inches by 6 inches by 12 inches. Handheld clutch purses cannot be larger than 4.5 inches by 6.5 inches. MSU Director of Communications Sid Salter said the policy is the wave of the future and resembles the practice at NFL stadiums. Many SEC schools have also adopted similar policies. Salter acknowledged that the first couple of games will be a learning experience. At Ole Miss, fans will not be able to bring backpacks or any bags larger than 12 by 12 by 12 inches. They recommended they recommend the use of clear bags smaller than 8.5 inches by 11 inches to carry items into the stadium. And speaking of football, in sports, Ole Miss coach Hugh Freeze gave his team a lukewarm assessment after leading it through a scrimmage on Sunday. Freeze said there were too many penalties and missed assignments, mostly on defense during the Rebels scrimmage. He's hoping to see a lot of improvement before the season opener on September 5th against number four ranked Florida State. The number 11 ranked Rebels, 10 and three last year with a Sugar Bowl victory, are trying to break in some young defensive backs. Freshman strong safety Miles Hartsfield and sophomore free safety Zedrick Woods are both penciled in as starters. 
Safeties coach Corey Batoon and senior nickelback Tony Connor are looking to bring the youngsters along quickly in order to be ready to face the Seminoles, who are expected to start highly touted redshirt freshman DeAndre Francois at quarterback. That's it for today's news break. I want to remind you to check out the podcast that we have three days a week, The Memo, every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday with myself and W. Derek Russell. Had a new have a new episode coming today, in fact. You can look for it this afternoon uh, in iTunes, uh, any of your podcast apps, or at memo.djournal.com. All the stories that I talked about today can be found in your daily journal or at djournal.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, at djournalnow, and give our Facebook page a like. And that's it for this Wednesday. We'll be back tomorrow. See you then.